Welcome again. Today we consider the effect of inhibitors on enzyme activity. But what's the point of studying about how chemicals can stop these biochemical reactions from occurring? Well, the reason that we study about inhibitors is because there might be a good reason for wanting to inhibit or stop certain biochemical reactions which happen in living organisms. One important application involves the current search to manage the problem of malaria. The battle with malaria is ongoing because malaria is not caused by mosquitoes but it is spread by mosquitoes and it is caused by a tiny organism, a protist called Plasmodium. One particular species of Plasmodium, Plasmodium falciparum, is proving to be quite problematic. It mutates itself. It's constantly in a struggle for existence with the drugs that humans use to treat it. These drugs that are used to treat malaria caused by Plasmodium falciparum, they are inhibitors. They seek to disrupt biochemical pathways in the organism with the aim of providing a relief from the symptoms of malaria. And clinical trials and studies with various drugs are going on around the world. And it is very useful if one group of researchers in one country shares their findings and their studies with other groups of researchers. It is an excellent idea to place all of these studies and all of these findings into some online database. And this is exactly what is happening as human beings continue the battle against malaria. I would like you to search the web and see if you can find an online database associated with the treatment of malaria and specifically Plasmodium falciparum. Now that we know why we need to study about enzyme inhibition, let's look at the chemistry associated with the process of enzyme inhibition. Let's first consider this black line here which looks at how changing the substrate concentration affects the rate of an enzyme-catalyzed reaction. When substrate concentrations are relatively low, like you can see here, then the probability of an enzyme with its active site coming into contact with a substrate is fairly low. But when you increase the amount of substrate, or the concentration of substrate, the probability of enzymes and substrates colliding with the right orientations increases and therefore the likelihood of having a conversion from reactants into products increases. But continuing to increase the substrate concentration indefinitely would ultimately lead to no significant change in the rate of the reaction. Because once you have a limited amount of enzyme and the only thing that's being changed is the substrate, the point will come where the active sites become saturated or overwhelmed with substrate. And at this point, it would make little or no difference to add additional amounts of substrate, for the active sites are already surrounded by large amounts of substrate molecules, and in a sense, they are overwhelmed by this additional substrate, leading to no significant increase in the rate. And the reaction is said to be proceeding at its maximum velocity. In this second graph, we see the effect of competitive inhibition. And the competitive inhibitor has the ability to fit into the active site of the enzyme. And if you have competitive inhibitors around in the enzyme substrate mix, then there is also a probability of them fitting into the active site. And there's also a probability that they would bump out of the active site and then allow the substrate to come in. But their very presence slows down the likelihood of an enzyme substrate complex being formed. And in slowing this down, they slow down the rate of the reaction. But this slowing down is really only effective at low substrate concentrations. Once you have enough substrate around, or a high substrate concentration, then the likelihood of the enzyme substrate complex being formed becomes very high. And the presence of the inhibitor effectively becomes insignificant. So ultimately, with a competitive inhibitor present, once the substrate concentration is high enough, the rate of the reaction 
reaches the same Vmax as the reaction without the inhibitor. But sometimes there is a type of inhibition known as non-competitive inhibition, where another molecule associates with the enzyme away from the active site at a spot known as the allosteric site. And once this association happens, it disrupts the overall structure of the enzyme and it can lead to a change in the structure of the active site. Once the structure of the active site is changed, then it becomes impossible for the substrate and the enzyme to form the enzyme substrate complex. So what effectively happens is some of the enzyme molecules are made non-functional, leaving the reaction mix with a handicap or less enzymes. And with less enzymes, the maximum rate is limited. Another type of inhibition is end product inhibition, where you may have a biochemical pathway where one enzyme works with a series of enzymes to convert a starting substance into an end product. Once that end product reaches a certain critical concentration, then the very product can bind with the first enzyme and act as a non-competitive inhibitor to shut down the pathway. This is an example of negative feedback. The amino acid threonine goes through a series of steps to form isoleucine. And isoleucine then acts as an inhibitor on threonine deaminase. This is an example of end product inhibition. A specific example of competitive inhibition. And finally, let's consider the meaning of this term, Km, the Michaelis constant. In comparing the effect of a competitive inhibitor versus no competitive inhibitor, in both cases, the maximum rate is achieved. So then, how can we compare the impact of a competitive inhibitor? One way is to find half of the maximum velocity. And you look at the substrate concentration that gives half of Vmax, that gives you Km, the Michaelis constant. And you can see here that you would have a fairly low Km without an inhibitor and with the competitive inhibitor present, Km is much higher. Km is a measure, or it's a way of quantifying the effect of the competitive inhibitor versus the effect of no inhibitor.